Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, What's up, fat lips? And I say, Cool it. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, What's up, fat lips? And I say, Cool it. Hey guys, this is Fat Loots from Fat Loots Gold Blog. And in this video, I'm going to be highlighting some of my favorite options for Trade Skill Master. Now, normally, I would go over each and every little option, but that video would be insanely long. So to spare your sanity, I'm going to just highlight some of my favorites. So first I type slash TSM and go to the options. The first one I want to highlight is hide minimap icon. I always check this one. You know I type slash TSM to open this window, and that's really all this icon does is open this window. Moving on, I output my chat to the tab fat. Now the reason I do this is to unclog my general, I think this is normally set to general, and I unclog my general chat by having my trade skill master output to a different tab, which I could also look at if I want to. So all my mailing messages, as you can see, are in the tab fat. If I go to general, there's trade and all that stuff. Pretty cool. When you delete characters, go to this drop down and select them. Delete them. Moving on. So for my auction house settings, uh, I like to have auctioning be the tab that opens when I open the auction house. Um, shopping, I think, is the default, and I'm not too big of a fan of that. I post more than I shop, so I select auctioning as the tab. You can pick your own. Open all bags with auction house. I like to keep that on, but if you don't, if that annoys you, you can turn it off. You could also change how many rows are shown in the auction house results. But that's not entirely necessary. But check that one out. Moving on to appearance. This is a cool option that I don't think many people take advantage of. Some people do, some people don't. You can change all the things, pretty much, in how Trade Skill Master looks. Oh boy. Anyway, I, I like Goblinier, as you can see. That's the one I generally use. But you can literally change any color and any text size in the entire add-on. It's very customizable and you can make it your own. Maybe one day I'll make a fat loots kind of uh, that would be nice. Anyway, you could also um, create different profiles. What profiles do is they save operations and groups separately. So you could create a profile for one realm or another realm or you could create a new profile to test things that you don't know are gonna work or not. And so, so you ha can always go back to your old profile if you screw things up. Uh, my normal profile is called test exclamation point. So I could switch to it here, but I'm making my operations video or options video. <laughs> so I'm going to switch back to that. You can create new ones by typing a name here. Copy the settings from a different one. So if I wanted to copy the settings from my normal profile, I could go down here, click test, and it would copy all the settings from that profile onto the options video profile. And you can delete some of your profiles if you'd like. Next, I want to go to the accounting options. So this is for the accounting module of Trade Skill Master. Uh, the, the only things I like to do here is don't prompt to record trades. Uh, if you ever made a trade uh, gold for an item, now it only works if you're trading gold for one specific type of item. If you're trading multiple items, Trade Skill Master doesn't know how much gold should be allocated to each item, so it's not going to record that anyway. But anyway, when you hit trade, it says, do you, you want to record this? Th checking this box will tell you, yes, I always want to record it. Stop asking me. And that's how I feel about it. Another cool option is use Smart Average for purchase price. I personally don't use this one, but what it'll do when it shows your purchase price in the tooltip, it will tell you it will tell you the average price for the last X you bought, where X is what's in your inventory. By inventory, guild bank bags, uh, bank, personal bank. So if I have 200 of a certain item, it'll only tell me how much, on average, the last 200 I bought were. Which is kind of cool, but I don't like to use it personally. In auction DB, there's really one option, and you should not need it. Uh, this is just if you want to use the auction DB auction house tab, which to scan the auction house, you should be using the app. If you're not using the app, check out the previous video that I did on the Trade Skill Master app and download it and use it. It's really helpful. There's no reason not to. It's the 21st century, people. In the auctioning tab, 
the first thing I like to do, well, I don't really like to do this, but it's something you can customize, is you can change the sounds, the scan complete sound and the confirm complete sound. Uh, as you probably know, the scan complete sound is the ready check. There we go. So that's what plays whenever TSM is done scanning, so that's great. Normally you could change it to a bunch of different sounds, there's a whole bunch here. Also, I like to check cancel auctions with bids. This will cancel auctions if they already have bids on them. Sorry, I like to uncheck this because odds, the, the way I post things personally is the bids are really close to the buyouts. So if somebody wants to save a couple percent, a couple pennies by bidding on it rather than buying it out, I'm not going to cancel that. So I uncheck this option. Moving on to crafting really useful one here. I believe this is normally zero, but the profit deduction you should set to at least 5%. So we're, we're thinking about crafting now. So when you craft items, it's going to tell you the profit minus the 5% that the auction house is going to take. So we definitely want to make that 5% to compensate for the auction house cut. I'm not sure if that's a default or not, because when I made this profile, it still has some of the elements of my old profile, so I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Inventory settings, we kind of saw this in module options, and I'm curious uh, when you forget characters. Now, when you forget characters, you're kind of deleting everything about them. And ignoring guilds, you're just ignoring their inventory. So when you go to crafting, you're also ignoring their inventory. I interesting, I don't know. For characters, you can just ignore the characters rather than delete them for their inventory in, uh, specifically. I think it'll still track their gold, so that, that might be useful. It's a little bit different, right? Moving on, going down to destroying. So in the destroying options, the first thing that I like to check, well, uncheck, is the show destroying frame automatically. Normally this will pop up whenever you get something, say, you could disenchant if you're an enchanter. And that could be kind of annoying when you're doing a raid and it pops up and you can't close it because you get into combat right after that. That's my personal peeve with it. For some reason that window just won't cooperate once you get in combat and close. So I uncheck that option pretty much exclusively. Next you have these cool little disenchanting options down here. You could change the maximum quality that the TSM destroy window is willing to disenchant. So I set mine to rare. Uh, I include soulbound items because the only things I wouldn't want to disenchant are epic. And the above custom price. This is an interesting setting. I do not use it as you can see, but you could say easily you could say something um, well vendor cells already I was gonna say vendor cell but vendor cells already uh, incorporated if you could sell it to a vendor for more than the enchanting materials are worth it'll not show up in your TSM destroy window but you could set this to something else like maybe DB market or 50% DB market if you think you have a chance of selling it on the auction house for example however you like um, something cool to play around with Moving on to mailing, I, I think mailing's pretty solid out of the box. Some things just to know that you can customize is the default mailing page, uh, inbox, TSM groups, quick send, other. Inbox is pretty standard, but if you find you're using some of the other ones more, then you can change it. Why not? There's also the keep free bag space option. If you want to keep a couple slots free, up to 20, you can do that here. Most uh, auction house, not auction house, mailing add-ons have this sort of option, and TSM is no different. There's a mail complete sound, open mail complete sound, so you could put in a sound to let you know that you're done opening your mail. And finally, for the automatic mail disenchantables maximum quality, so if you remember, one of the tabs is other where you can mail disenchantable items off to your enchanter. I set this to rare. I think the default's uncommon, but I'll, I'll mail off rare BOEs to my disenchanter if I'm using that option. Pretty cool. Moving on to shopping. For shopping, 
The two things I like to change in shopping are the disenchant search options. So the min disenchant level and max, uh, you could set this to be appropriate for your enchanter, but mine are the min and max. The max disenchant search percent, so basically, this is only going to, if I set this to 33%, it's only going to show items that disenchant for at least three times what the cost of the item is when I'm shopping. So that's a cool little thing to play around with if you use the disenchant search in Trade Skill Master at the auction house. Next, I like to change the posting options. I don't necessarily change them. Here's the defaults. Um, zero copper, 93% bid, and a normal price of 150% TV market. Now, these are the options that come up when you shift-click an item into the shopping window at the auction house. Now, of course, I love my undercut being a copper. That's fine. Uh, bid percent, maybe I want to up that a little bit to 97%. And... The normal post price, maybe I want to change that. Now, um, these aren't necessarily what you should make them, but you can change it. Uh, if I don't have an item on the auction house, maybe I'd rather post it at 2.5 times the market price rather than 1.5 times the market price. So I'll change this to 250. Pretty cool. And finally, moving on to vendoring. Vendoring is pretty good by default, and I really don't change anything in this window. All right, guys. That's all I got for you today. If there's an option that you love that I missed, let me know in the comments. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have suggestions for other gold making videos you think I should make, leave them in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for new gold making videos and check out the consortium forums for more gold making discussion and theory crafting. Until next time guys, cheers.